Hello, this is Scott Milliken. I'm the lead developer for OpenDCIM, which is an open source software version of data center infrastructure management. Today we're going to talk about some fairly new features. Some of these were introduced in version 3.1 and some of these were introduced in version 3.2, which came out just a few days ago um, in early April 2014. Um, the main focus of today's uh, video instruction is going to be uh, talking about logical uh, organization of uh, your data centers um, and I say that uh, emphasizing the plural aspect of it because uh, this is really something that is a huge benefit to someone who has more than one data center and even if you only have one data center if you have a very large data set uh, say a lot of cabinets or a very large amount of space that you'd like to be able to kind of try to um, you know containerize and um, uh, break down into smaller logical pieces uh, for easier management this would be the way to go so uh, we're gonna start off showing here I've got uh, two data centers I've got DC1 and DC2 defined in open DCIM and I've got some cabinets in there already um, but these are in two different areas of the country and what I would love to have would be a map of the United States where I could click somewhere on that map and um, have it take me to the data center so that I have that logical view. So the way we would do that is by creating a container. So we're going to come over here to infrastructure management. We're going to go down to edit containers and I don't have any defined yet. So I'm going to set up a new container and I'm going to call it the United States. And I've got a drawing here, a blank map of the United States that I pulled from uh, Wikipedia because it has nice Creative Commons licensed um, media on there. And uh, you'll notice this uh, blank here where you can fill in a parent container if uh, another container already exists. You could actually nest these. Let's say you wanted to go from a global view to a country view to maybe a regional view and then even to a metropolitan. You can create as many levels as you'd like and continue to create hot zones on all of them. We're only going to do the one container today. Um, but what I show you is going to apply for pretty much anything. So once I clicked create, you'll notice that we now have under the home tree, we have United States. And if I click on United States, it brings up a copy of the map. Okay, that's nice and pretty, but there's nowhere for me to click on here to get to my data centers. So how do I tell the container where my data centers are? Well, um, we go into infrastructure management, edit data centers, and let's pull up our first data center, which is DC1. And there is a little drop down here that we can select our container to be part of. It can either be part of none or it can be part of any that you've created. So I selected the United States and the um, X and Y um, is going to be determined based upon where I click on this image to select my coordinates. So data center one is right here in East Tennessee where I'm located and as soon as I click update you'll notice that DC1 moved from being at the same level as United States to being underneath United States. That designates that it is part of that container. So we'll say our second data center is also in the United States but it is up here in the New York metropolitan area. Click update and DC2 has moved here as well. So now if I click on United States on the tree view here then I get my map and it shows the two different data centers. Okay, So that's pretty much how you do containers. Now we're going to dive deeper into data center one because that is one that I have set up uh, to be similar to like a baby version of a colo facility. You'll notice that I've got partitions here uh, within the data center, these black lines. Uh, you could think of those as either walls or they could be a uh, wire cage anything like that that uh, you know may, you may be using to, s to separate off certain areas or you don't even have to have any kind of a physical barrier you could just say that logically these two rows belong to one customer and these two rows belong to another or these five rows down here belong to another and this one's a different customer and this one now you'll notice when I move my cursor to the areas that I've created up here at the top that you get this red border and that indicates that you are navigating into a zone so if I click anywhere in the zone that is not actually on a cabinet, it will take me to a subview of just that zone. So the zone changes and it has its own metrics here. You'll notice that it um, approximated the size of the zone. 
since I told it how big the total map was in terms of square feet for data center one. So take a look, square feet, it says, yeah, this is 1500 square feet. So if I click in here, based upon the number of pixels that I defined as my zone, it says, yeah, you're roughly around 292 square feet. Okay. Um, now it also, for every cabinet that's within the zone, it computes all of these metrics based just on that zone. So this is a nice way to get metrics for if, if you've organized your data center so that you know a customer has all their stuff in one spot. Um, this is a nice little aggregation tool type um, thing to do. So how do we set these zones up? Well we go into infrastructure management and we click on edit zones. So you'll notice I've got one for my customer ABC, I've got another one for demarcation and another one for internal systems. We're going to create a new zone and it's for customer XYZ and it is a member of data center one. Now if you have a huge map and you've got a zone that's teeny tiny um, and when you click on that zone you'd like to actually zoom it in further so that you can see it better then you can change this zoom ratio or Consequently, if you've got a map and the zone is huge and you want to shrink it down when you click on that individual zone, you could give it a number smaller than 100%. So we've created the zone and now it says, all right, tell me where on this map the zone exists. So you click and drag just like you would for a cabinet. And once you hit update, it's going to create that box for you. So if we go back to DC1, now when I hover inside of here, it gives me the red border to tell me that this is my zone. I click on it and you'll see again it goes through and it estimates the square footage and since, it, since I don't have any um, systems defined in here then of course it doesn't have any um, computed wattage or measured wattage or anything like that. Now you will notice that even though it, it has drawn cabinets into this section of the map, the cabinets listed in the tree here are still not associated with the customer XYZ zone. Okay, If I click the little plus there I get nothing underneath it. So we need to actually add these into the zone. So if you click AD11 and edit the cabinet then you can add it to customer XYZ zone and when you do that we'll come back over here and go into the zone it now shows I have my 45 Utah cabinet in here and it is part of customer XYZ zone. Okay, But there's another um, organizational tool that we haven't done yet and that is called a row. So if we take a look at customer ABC you'll notice that I've got a row AD and a row AG and everything is nice and neatly tucked into those areas. So why would we want to um, set things up as a row? Well, for one thing, it helps with the, um, the organization and keeping your tree from getting super cluttered. Um, another is if you wanted to be able to take a look at all your cabinets um, side by side, or at least as many as will fit um, side by side, then you can click on the, the little wording here that says row such and such. Now you'll notice something kind of odd. It says cabinet AG03 and then one and then two and then five and then four. So I've done this on purpose to illustrate but uh, if we go back and take a look at the map you'll notice that see how the little the green highlight here sticks a little bit further out on this side and you know they're not all even because I've drawn it by hand and I didn't make sure that the XY coordinates were you know consistent across the entire row um, the way that we determine the order that you display something in is by knowing which side of the cabinet is the front side, uh, you know, the side that gets the air intake. How do we know um, what it's currently set at? Well, you can come over here to the drop down and you'll notice there's now an airflow that you can choose and we have arrows that indicate what the front side is. So the blue side is the side that is the air intake, that's the cold side and the red side is the exhaust. That's the hot side. So right now by, everything is still set to the default. Um, the default when you create a new cabinet or when you convert from a previous version of um, OpenDCIM is the cabinets are uh, the top of the map, not the top of the cabinet. 
So there's two different ways to change um, your airflow. So we can go into the uh, map coordinate section and when you map your coordinates you can say that um, the front edge is the top right bottom or left so if we submit and now we go back over to our data center you'll see the airflow that we now have a cabinet that flows cold air this side and hot air that side now that's the one-off way to do it the easier way if you've already got your cabinets set into rows when you click on a cabinet in that row with the right mouse button so you right click on it you can either set the cabinets intake direction or you can set it for the entire row so here it's left and here it's right so now we indicate that this is our cold aisle right and then this would be our exhaust side so this would be to the right and this would be to the left so here we've got cold 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 okay uh, since I haven't added all these things into the rows yet um, not gonna bother with those but um, that is how you set those so now that I have the um, direction or the front edge determined for that entire row if I go back into it click on the row AG it now shows them in the correct order because I know that they're in the order of whatever the Y coordinate from lowest to highest and that will tell me what the um, what order to place them in if we had a top or a bottom then it would have been the X coordinate um, left and right is the Y coordinate so that pretty much sums up uh, containers zones and rows I hope this has been helpful uh, to you uh, please remember that OpenDCIM is donation based. There is a link on the OpenDCIM.org website so that you can make a donation. Any amount is helpful uh, to take care of things like our hosting account and uh, domain registration and um, all that good stuff. So uh, I hope this has been helpful and uh, take a look for some of my other recordings. Thanks.